What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate, we're talking about functions and expressions, and we're going to talk about the iteration indexes function in the referencing functions section. So, what is this function? This function allows you to basically create a count of the number of iterations or the number of times you're going through a loop. Um, and gives you that as like a value. So it's a bit like setting a variable and having like a count of that um, variable uh, for the number of times it's gone through that loop. Um, it's a bit hard to explain, but I'll kind of show you it with, with examples, which might be a bit easier to understand. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. Um, I've got a CDS trigger for when a record is updated, and then we're going to list some records. Um, at this point, I'm going to initialize a variable. So I've got a variable here called var1. It's just an integer, and we're starting off with a value of zero. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a for each loop. So in this for each loop, we're going to create a record, which is how um, we're doing this. And then uh, I'm going to increment the variable for each one of these records that we're pulling back. So this for each loop is based on this list records and is basically going to increase um, the variable by one each time. So that's how we're going to increase the variable. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to have a do until loop. So do until is actually a really useful looping mechanism because it allows you to uh, loop through a series of actions until you hit a certain number. So you could use this to wait for certain things. So uh, in this do until loop, we're actually saying uh, we don't wait until var1 is equal to 2. But inside here, we could do certain things. So we could, you know, send emails. We could, you know, do anything inside here, which it would do until this value equates to true. Or can be just used as a wait condition. But for that, you probably want to use delay until. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait until this variable, this var1, is equal to 2. Now, then I actually have another do until loop. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you what this function does when you have a nested uh, do until loop. So um, I renamed these do until loops uh, to wait var is the parent one and wait var2 is the child one. And what we're going to do in the wait var2 is we're actually going to wait until the variable 1 is equal to 4. So we're going to do the first one until it's equal to 2 and then we're going to um, do the second one until it's equal to 4. Now I've got two compose actions here. So if I click into Compose here, I'll click this Compose, and if I go across to Expression, uh, and then I can scroll down until we get to the Referencing Functions. Go down to Referencing Functions, and then we have this Iteration Indexes, and then it says Loop Name is the parameter we need to pass in. So it says when used inside an until loop, this function returns the current in iteration index of that specific loop. So what that's saying is it's going to give us a number of the index, so how many times that loop has run um, and where we're at with it, so we can use that later on. So this could be used uh, potentially if you um, want to break out of a loop if it's going too um, like too far down or there's too many loops and you create an infinite loop sort of thing. So we could say if the loop hits like 10, we want to exit out and do something else. So in this instance, I'm going to click in um, iteration indexes there. We're going to see it as put up there. And then next, we're actually going to use the name of these do until loops. So I'm just going to put single quotation marks and then type wait var. Um, so that's going to get, return the number of times this um, do until loop has iterated um, into this and give us a number for it. So I'll click OK in there. It goes into there. In this compose action two, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually going to reference the other um, the other do until loop, so the wait var two. So we'll just do this again. Wait var two. And click OK. Saying it's not valid, uh, it does that sometimes. Just click it again, and it fixes it. So. This top, this first compose action, we're going to count the number of times this 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 parent um, do until loop iterates, and then in the second one, we're going to see how many times this child do until iterates. So we'll, while with those two plumbed in, we will test it. 
Slit test, we're just going to run this from a previous action because I don't want to update a record in CDS and it's just going to run and use that trigger and that data. And we can see it's going to run through. So it's going to take a few seconds to uh, do my loops. Um, so we see the first loop is done uh, in a couple of seconds. Um, the second, uh, the do until loop is taking a little bit longer, it's taking 10 seconds. But once it's done, we can take a look at it. <coughs> so, we have two inputs here. So, as you can see, there's two different do untils. One shows, um, has a thing that says show 1 to 20, so we can show up to 20 records here. And the second one shows 1 of 1. Now, um, I'll kind of go back in a minute and I'll show you um, some of the advanced settings. But what I did is I set up this um, this top, this parent do until to only run for 20 cycles. So that's why it says one of 20 here. But this is kind of important because it's kind of showing um, how many times this loop has iterated. So if I expand this one, we can see we've got zero of zero. And in this one, we've got zero and zero. So, both of these compose actions are inside of this wait var to loop, meaning that we can actually specify which do until loop we are um, specifying. So they're both inside the, the second one. But as we update this top uh, wait var and flick through the number of records or the number of iterations it went through, we can see that the first one updates the second one doesn't. So the, so the first one, as we're clicking through, this is the number of times that this uh, do until loop has iterated through. And it's gone up to 20 times in the end, um, because that's what my cycles are set to, it's set to 20. Um, but as I'm clicking through all these, this bottom one is only ever showing zero. Now the reason for this is that this first wait var condition has run through 20 cycles. Um, I'm not I'm not entirely sure what cycles means. I think it's some sort of estimate of seconds, maybe you know, um, a half a second a cycle. Um, the documentation's not that great around what this is, um, but essentially it's run through 20 times. And as it's run through 20 times, we know that in the time it's taken to do these parts, uh, or in the time it's taken to do this the variable has updated from one from zero to one to two to three to four so in this wait condition here we are waiting and we are running through and checking to see when that variable equals that command so where that variable equals that number so where var one equals uh, i think it was two but once it's got to the end of that 20 cycles this secondary wait condition kicks in but because that variable is already equal to the number four because um, it's hit two but it's carried on and then once it's hit four um, that's the end of it um, this condition here has gone well I'm already at four so I don't need to go through any cycles so this is the so that condition is already met so I'm just trying to carry on so the reason this has an input of zero is because it starts at zero you'll notice that the number of records here that I've got are up to 11, but the inputs are 10. And that's because it starts at zero as in no iterations, then one iteration, then two iterations, then three iterations. And that's kind of what this is, is referring to. So during this second wait condition, we've already met the criteria that we required. Um, it's already, the variable's already equal to four, and that's why this second one there are no actions to flick through, there's no records, there's no iterations to flick through, and that's why this uh, inputs at zero. Let's go ahead to edit a second. So when I referred to the cycles before, I covered this in a uh, previous video about the do until loop, but there is a count, and the count determines the number of times this loop, this will um, sort of like count and loop through until, um, and, you know, the number of times it'll do it until it checks to say, right, is this condition met? If it is, then exit and then um, do it, else carry on counting this number until we hit the timeout. So this timeout is saying it's going to time out after one hour, but this count is the number of times it will run through this to check to see whether this condition is now met. So it's run through 20 times, then check to see whether variable one is equal to two. 
it is. It exits out, and then it exits enters into this um, wait condition or this do until condition, where it says does var one equal four, and um, because we've counted that 20, 20 cycles, var one is already equal to four. So immediately it just goes, yeah, it is. I don't need to. This one's set to sixty, which is the default. I don't need to count sixty because I'm already there. I'm already meeting this criteria. Let's just carry on and then that and then exit out. And that's a really complex sort of theory to kind of come to. Um, so kind of hope that explains it a little bit better than kind of reading the documentation because it's not that great. But essentially what we're doing is we are going to essentially count to 20, not really count to 20, count to 10. But we're going through 20 cycles of checking um, if this equals this. Uh, and when it does, we're going to exit out into this one. And then when this equals this, we're going to exit out again. And that's what these two indexes do. This tells us how many times it's iterated through. Um, and you can then store that and use that later on. So um, I don't have any use cases myself about what this would be used for. Um, I said I think it'd be times when you are exit out of loops and things like that. So if you have a good use case or if you use this at the moment, let me know in the comments down below. I always want to know these things. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.